Hello, my name is Stuart, Classical Record Collector here. Today I'm going to be reviewing the label Turnabout. And let's go straight ahead and listen to 30 seconds of a Turnabout LP. Okay, there we are. That was very nice, I thought. You're list you were listening to uh, Vivaldi, Concerto for Oboe and Bassoon, of course. Um, I only played 30 seconds of it. The piece, uh, the, the piece is from this LP, which I bought actually yesterday. I found some other turnabouts in a charity shop, so I decided to make this review of turnabouts. I first started listening to Turnabouts uh, 30, 35 years ago when I began to see them in collections. As some of you know, I was a classical record dealer in the 90s. So I've seen hundreds and hundreds of Turnabouts. Um, as somebody who was trying to make money out of classical records, Turnabouts were never really of much interest to me. And I usually got them as part of a collection for absolutely nothing. However, even in those days, I did appreciate them. And let me just give you some of the history. So. Turnabout is a budget classical label, which in turn uh, was started or launched by another budget label, Vox. Now, Vox started in 1945, was launched in America as a budget label, initially started producing 78 RPM records. And obviously when the long playing microgroove record appeared in the 50s, consequently, they began to release on uh, LP records. My The, the, first, the, the first Vox set I can ever remember is the Locatelli Violin Concertos, which I bought in the early 90s at a car boot sale. So, and I wish I had that set now. It was such a good set. But anyway, moving back on to Turnabout. So Turnabout was released, was launched in the mid 60s. And let me just read from, I've got a good source here. I'll put a link in the description. I'll just read it because it would be better than me uh, trying to uh, collate all the details and, and sort of blunder through them. So let me just read out. Established in 1965, Turnabout was established as a low price single LP label, label for new recordings by Vox Productions. Although the label contained some reissues from the original Vox label, as well as some historical recordings, Turnabout quickly became the dominant imprint of the company's new recording projects. Turnabout's repertoire encompassed a wide range from solo instrumental works to chamber music to concerto recordings choral and symphonic works, in addition to some acclaimed early music recordings by ensembles such as the Württemberg Chamber Orchestra, <clears throat> added to the expansive musical approach. Cover art also demonstrated diversity, ranging from traditional fine art reproductions to 1960s styles cartoons. Um, actually, just looking at, the, looking at the cover here, we can see that this is one of those uh, 1960s style cartoons we can see their trumpet player entertaining an ar aristocratic lady with a beautiful uh, background through a palace window overlooking a harbour. And turnabout cover art on the whole is absolutely wonderful. Let me just continue. Uh, Though its presentation was less austere than Vox predecessors, the high standards of the line and note writing and most importantly the artistic quality was maintained. Yeah, so I call I call Turnabout uh, the Cinderella label, mainly for, for several reasons. First of all, obviously, it's a budget label. Uh, the music is what I often call Cinderella music. And for, exa for example, on this record, we've got four relatively little known Vivaldi concertos. I've got some more Turnabouts here just to illustrate my point. We've got Haydn Concerto for Lyra here on this one. Never even heard those. Looking forward to listening to those. We've got music for two guitars. Um, yeah. Uh, so dances and songs from Spain and Latin America for two, two guitars. When do you ever see music like that? Very rarely. 
Here we are, the young Mozart, the first four piano concertos transcribed from uh, Johann, Johann Christian Bach, their reworkings of Johann Christian Bach's material. I have listened to those, but I haven't really paid them enough attention. So that is something that you very rarely see. Also, of course, Cinderella music, Cinderella label and Cinderella performers. One of the reasons that they were able to keep the price down is that they used performers who were excellent but we're not big names and consequently you've got excellent quality performances really on a budget. So I'm not one of these people that thinks, oh, I've got to listen to high fits. I've got to listen to um, Chung. I've got to listen to uh, Joshua Bell, etc. The absolute pinnacle of violin playing. There are many absolutely superb violinists who you've never even heard of. Uh, a pianist, etc. Conductors, orchestras. So uh, the orchestra here, for example, the Stuttgart soloists. Yeah, I mean, not the Philharmonia, not the Chicago Symphony Orchestra. These people work for relatively little, little money and produce excellent results. So uh, Hummel, uh, more Hummel, the Hoffman and Giuliani. Never even heard of a lot of these composers. So yeah, Cinderella music. Here's Mozart, a musical joke. It's even, you don't often see a musical joke on, on record and it's paired with uh, Leopold Mozart's Toy Symphony in the Sleigh Ride. So really sort of interesting Cinderella repertoire as I call it. As for the actual recordings, I believe that there's an American, there are American turnabouts and there are British turnabouts. Look, you guys, you all know as well as I do that Britain is the king of the LP record. Uh, the Decca, the HMV, Columbia, SAX, they were all the absolute pinnacle of pressings. And with due respect to Deutsch Grammophon, Philips, etc., the, the British pressings were, were the best, more or less, in the world. That's why collectors prize them so highly. And I'm not saying that good pressings weren't made in America, but even with RCA records, the British pressing is generally preferred often pressed by Decker. But anyway, we're getting into other material. We're getting into other areas. I understand somebody once told me that turnabouts were pressed by Decker. I don't know if they were, but it wouldn't surprise me because these are really superb pressings. I like the fact that the vinyl is thick, you know, not like the Philips records from the um, late 70s and 80s. And a lot of the Decker Jubilees, for example, pressed on quite f thin vinyl, although still good but you know these are nice thick pressings uh you know it's, it's got a weighty feel to it the vinyl looks nice the label is boring okay it's a boring label but who cares about that it's the actual music and the the sound quality the sound quality is very good you heard that vivaldi at the beginning i don't know what you thought of that i recorded that from my um bush re record player and i think it sounds quite I think it sounds quite nice. It sounds quite good. There's a good separation in the instruments. It's not primitive stereo. It's actually quite good stereo. The surfaces are fairly quiet, actually. For a 60s record, the surface is really fairly quiet. I'm quite impressed with it. And there's not really much more to say about turnabouts. So if you ask me, are turnabouts worth buying? Yes, they are. Having said that, I picked up these turnabouts yesterday in a British charity shop. You know, I got all these for 50 pence each. Yeah, well, I would have paid more. I would have paid a pound for them. But I mean, for 50 pence each, I'm absolutely delighted with these. It's really, you've got to forget about your SXLs. Forget about making money out of records. Forget about that. Unless you're going to be lucky, uh, that's all gone now. If you're really interested in music and listening to vinyl, and for me, vinyl is, is the best listening experience, you've got to start building up your collection of records like this just for listening, not for making money. I'm not making money out of records anymore. I'm just I'm just listening to them. If I come across something valuable now and again, I'll sell it to pay for my hobby. But I'm looking around now just, just for the sheer listening pleasure of it. Let me know what you think about Turnabout. I'm sure that you, you've got some experience of them. Do you agree with me that, that, you know, they are pretty good really, given that they're budget records, really interesting repertoire. Okay, Cinderella performers and everything, but who would be without turnabouts? Let's face it, turnabout is a legend. 
not taking anything away from Decca and the, there are different kinds of legend, but in budget in budget labels, Turnabout is definitely a legend in uh, vinyl LPs. Okay, thanks a lot for watching. Please support my channel. I'll do more content. The more you support me and give me likes and give me subscriptions, the more I'll try and make content. So thanks a lot. Bye for now.